Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've had a good week. It's Friday again, so I'm back here with another collection video for you. So last video I made a video about two recent vinyl acquisitions I had made by two Finnish bands. Uh, what I'm doing in this video is going back to my existing CD collection for another five discs. Uh, just to talk about those to keep the channel going in the meantime. We've got a lot of stuff coming up, but um, that's what I'm doing today. So I hope you stick around and enjoy this one. First of all, what we're listening to in the background. This is a compilation CD, probably familiar to a lot of people. This is Crusade from the North uh, on Moonfog Productions. So for those of you who don't know, but I'm sure most of you do, Moonfog is a Norwegian black metal label. I believe it was or is run by uh, Satir from Satiricon and it signed a lot of, that label signed a lot of important bands including Satiricon. So essentially this album, very old school release, I got it back in the 90s, I think in my late teens actually when, yeah like a lot of this music was still becoming familiar to me at that time and uh, I discovered a lot of new bands through this compilation at the time. So I'll just show you the, the booklet here. And that will give you an indication of the bands featured on this label at the time and also uh, on the CD. So basically, it's a handful of bands on this compilation. You've got Dark Throne, Storm, Satyricon, Neptune Towers, Wong Raven, and that's about it. Yeah, so basically those, those groups or projects uh, featuring a couple of tracks from each one. What I really like about it is there are some well-established ones, for example, like uh, The Hordes of Nebula by Dark Throne, but there's also some rehearsal tracks, some previously unreleased tracks. And I think these Moonfog bands like uh, Dark Throne, Satyricon, it's a very particular subset of Norwegian black metal. Like, um, they have a particular sound and atmosphere, which I really enjoy, always have over the years. So like, um, even though this CD here, it was kind of like a gateway to a lot of those bands for me, I still really enjoy this compilation. Like um, some of the unreleased tracks, like, or compilation tracks, like Night of the Triumphator by Satyricon, uh, their cover of Born for Burning by Bathory. Like there's, there's some real gems in there. And also um, Storm, yeah, there's some unreleased and rehearsal tracks. So it's just really interesting. But anyway, I won't go on longer than that. You guys know the bands on this label, I presume, so all I can say is it's a brilliant CD. Uh, so it's a double disc CD. One of them's actually playing now, of course, but this is what they look like, mirroring the cover. We've got that famous picture there. And on the inner sleeve, this shows you how old it is. It was promoting Satyricon's new album at the time, Nemesis Divina, so just Quality Norwegian black metal by a quality label. Nothing left to say. That's what's playing now. This track at the moment is Isengard, Nestlepart from... Ah, what's the name? What's the album? Hörsmork. I can't, I can't pronounce the Norwegian term, but anyway, that's what it is. All right, so getting straight into this then. Uh, five CDs just continuing down the alphabet. It's a pretty eclectic mix, except there are some stylistic similarities between the bands, but you'll see, so let's get straight into it. Okay, first CD I'm gonna talk about today. This is Arch Enemy with Burning Bridges. Uh, let's take this out. So there's the cover. You can see that a bit more clearly, that green statue. And the disc, similar image. So obviously I always say this, but Arch Enemy is a band which needs no significant introduction. A very well established and famous melodic Swedish death metal band uh, featuring several famous members. I think most famously uh, Michael Amott, who was also in Carcass for a while, like the Necroticism album. So he's been involved in various other projects, Spiritual Beggars, I can't remember them all, but yeah, like a very talented musician and guitar wizard. and. Um, yeah, this album, I first heard it 99, I think. It was on a compilation. I heard the track Demonic Science from this album, and I thought, fucking brilliant. Like, you might have seen my pre one of my previous videos when I mentioned melodic Swedish death metal isn't my number one style of music. But having said that, there are some bands that I really appreciate, and Arch Enemy, especially Old Arch Enemy, is one of them. 
Um, this album in particular, this will definitely be my favorite by them of all time. The vocalist on this album was um, Johan Lever, the guy in the middle, but I just prefer this period of the band because I think that, I don't know, the, the music just stands out and appeals a lot more to me. But anyway, this album is fucking brilliant. Um, just show you the booklet here. Yep, so lyrics clearly set up. Yeah. So what's to be said about this album? You guys have probably heard it, but just brilliant, polished, extremely catchy and hooky melodic Swedish death metal. Like uh, so many grooves on this album. It's heavy, brilliant guitar solos, amazing time changes. And it just all seems so effortless, like the way it flows together, it's just brilliant. Um, yeah, well, when I say breakdowns, not necessarily slow breakdowns, but they just shift. There's a lot of twists and turns in this album and um, it's really fantastic to listen to. Um, from beginning to end, no real bad tracks. I think the only track that I don't get into so much is Silver Wing, but again, it's not bad. There are just tracks which I think are way more awesome than that. Like um, The Immortal, the opening track, so catchy and groovy and then they have this like three-way guitar solo where it just goes on and on and on with so much just blistering with melody you can't not love that song also dead inside just great catchy melodic swedish death metal song and when they have that shift to the breakdown when they move into this mid pace part of the song with the guitar solo hooky as fuck such a great song um pilgrim amazing chugging riffs in that song and like um that song is an anthem, you can just really sing along to it, just amazing. As I mentioned, Demonic Science was the first song I heard on a compilation years ago. Just um, really sort of stop-start riffing and it's catchy, it's, it keeps you interested all the time and the vocals are really frantic and shouting. I remember like many years ago when I was listening to this, <laughs> at a party at home, my girlfriend at the time, she's going, what is this music? Because like the vocals kept becoming more intense, more and more like, yeah, like this heighten every time um also angel claw that's got some um black metal aspects like with the raspy vocals and um very very catchy like i would say the vocals are a highlight of that song and also um seed of hate slow mid to mid pace atmosphere it's got some clean guitars really really emotional like that's what i'll say about this album is that in all of the melodies whether it's the guitars or whether it's the anger of the vocals or the whispered vocals, it's just, it's just gripping with emotion. And um, like I said, it just flows together so effortlessly. So like, in my opinion, this is melodic Swedish death metal at its best. Like probably my favorite album in the genre. Now, um, of course they moved on later on with a new singer, Angela, and um, she stayed for a few albums and they got another singer. To be honest, I much prefer this album to the subsequent ones, and I'm not saying that in a sexist way, it has nothing to do with the fact that they got a female vocalist. In fact, I, I like that novelty, but I just felt that this album was just way more interesting than later ones, but hey, that's just me. So let me know what's your favorite Arch Enemy album, and if you've only heard later stuff, I strongly urge you to hear this one because you're really missing out if you don't give their early material a chance, because I think it's even better, personally. So um, let me know, what's your favorite Arch Enemy album? Which ones do you like? Which ones don't you like? I'd be interested to hear, but if you haven't heard this one, I strongly recommend it. Brilliant for fans of melodic Swedish death metal. This is Arch Enemy with Burning Bridges. All right, now for a complete shift of gears. We're going to another band uh, from Scandinavia, or a Nordic country anyway. This is Arch Goat with the Luciferian Crown. So, you see what I mean by a dramatic stylistic change. Uh, Arch Goat are a Finnish band and they play what a lot of people like to label Black Death. It's a crossover of black metal and death metal. Um, I've heard some people just label them black metal. Others I've even heard say it's just death metal. To me, it really is a crossover between those two genres because uh, stylistically, the guitars, they're very down-tuned and heavy and sort of groovy with a thick guitar tone. That's very death metal-esque in my opinion, but in terms of the lyrics and the imagery and philosophy, it's definitely black metal, especially with the fact that they use keyboards as well. So I think it's, for me, for my money, I would say black death is a good way to describe this band. But um, 
This is their most recent full length and it's a brilliant one. Came out a few years ago. Oh, there's the disc. Uh, the way I discovered this band, I actually saw them live several years ago and I'd never really heard their music. I'd heard the name because they're well established in that scene. But um, in 2013, they came to Thailand and they played a gig in a place in Bangkok called Udom Suk, which is on the outskirts of town, appropriate for a band like this because it was a very obscure location. And um, I was just blown away by how heavy and sick and extreme this band was. Like I had never heard anything like it in my life. Like the vocals extremely low and guttural like death metal. The band looked frightening on stage and um, it was just a mesmerizing performance, like almost ritualistic, I would say. And the, the interesting thing about that gig was they, the opening band was the Thai band called Surrender of Divinity and they are sort of surrounded by some controversy because their lead vocalist a few months after that concert was murdered by some crazy obsessed fan. Very sad because uh, that uh, lead vocalist and bassist Avaji, he was just a great charismatic performer and it's just really sad that uh, some crazy fan had to go and do that. But that was the concert where I saw those two bands play together. So Surrender of Divinity and Archgoat. But um, yeah, coming to this album, um, this band, they've been around since the early 90s and then they took a long break because they apparently they didn't like the commercial direction in which black metal was going, but then they reformed a few years later. And um, I'm so glad they did because this band is like no other, in my opinion. Um, I don't own all of their albums. I have some more on vinyl, but this was the one I started with and I really, really like it. Based on live performances, I thought I've got to dig deeper with this band. Um, so essentially, like I mentioned, it's very heavy, groovy, groove-driven guitars sometimes. They do have blast beats, but then they have breakdowns. And when I say breakdowns, I mean slow breakdowns. And, um, but it's, the guitar tone is so thick, it's so heavy, and it's got this really sort of sinister, evil, menacing sound. As I said, unusually for this genre, the vocals are extremely low and guttural, like death metal. But where it sounds like black metal in some parts is um, the fact that they, just the, the atmosphere they conjure with their music, with the, those kinds of emotions and riffs, it sounds a bit black metal-esque. Also with the use of keyboards, which just heighten the atmosphere. So that melting pot, that mixture, I think is, is unique. Like you don't hear this kind of stuff commonly. Um, I think they take some influence from early Impaled Nazarene, from Beherit and I'm sure a lot of bands are in that camp, but um, yeah, all I can say is this band is amazing to me and this album is no exception. Like when I heard the first couple of tracks on YouTube, after seeing the concert, I went, okay, I'm gonna buy this. So fucking awesome. Uh, how many tracks we got here? 10 and they're all really good from beginning to end. This is a fantastic listen. Um, my favorite tracks, there's so many, but basically tracks two and three are great. Jezebel's Black Mass Orgy, that's a little bit reminiscent of Impaled Nazarene with the um, animal samples and everything, like the, the goats and everything, but um, just uh, really heavy, really catchy, and wh what I like about this band is they're also not overly technical, so like, um, there's nothing flashy about it, it's straightforward, but it's very competently played, but just heavy, brutal, menacing, and evil sounding, and when you see it live, it escalates that to another level, trust me. Um, other tracks I really like on this, so apart from the other two I mentioned, um, Darkness Has Returned. What's interesting about that is it's got an almost punky sound to it, like um, the, the sound of the riff and the way the drums accompany it, like um, it's blasting, but like the way it starts off, like, like very punky to me, and I thought that's really cool, like an extreme band like this, they're showing influence from uh, a wide range of sources. Um, so Darkness Has Returned, great track. Also Sorcery and Doom, and um, Star of Darkness and Abyss, the way they use the keyboards over these menacing, evil sounding riffs, it sort of heightens it, like it's this really soaring atmosphere, majestic, but at the same time just so dark and incredibly evil. So um, really, really good album, and um, I urge you to check out other albums by them if you haven't. I've heard a lot of people talk about this band on YouTube and with good reason. I think they really are something special. 
So I mentioned that I saw them in 2013. In 2018, they came back to Thailand and I saw them again at a different location in Bangkok called Hollywood Awards. I don't like that venue as much. It's kind of like this sterile nightclub and I don't like the setup. There's the stage and there's this like gladiatorial pit and there's, ah, I just don't like the way it's set up. Whereas the first one was more like an assembly hall. So it added to that ritualistic atmosphere. But both times, this band was totally crushing, amazing live. Just the thickness of the guitar tone, the heaviness, and they're charismatic performers. So like, it really, this is really a band where I think it's heightened by the live performance. But anyway, if you haven't heard Arch Goat before, definitely check them out. And for my money, this is a good album to start with. So this is Arch Goat with the Luciferian Crown. By the way, I do have some more albums by them, as I mentioned, and you'll see that when I talk about my vinyls as well. So, to be continued. All right, up next, another black, al black metal album. This time from Sweden. This is Arkanum with Kampen. So, um, Arkanum, Arkanum, depends on how you choose to pronounce it. They are renowned as a kind of a uh, trollish black metal band. So from Sweden, it's largely one man, and um, it's sort of shifted styles over the years. Like it started out as sort of very primitive, tribal, nature, nature worshipping black metal, which is what's featured on this one. Uh, later, I think they changed. He changed to become an orthodox black metal band, but um, it's a very interesting band. Like not your run of the mill black metal band. Um, even for Swedish black metal, like Swedish black metal has a certain sound. I think when you hear this. This band, it has a Swedish sound, but it's still unique at the same time. So I'll just give you a look at that cover artwork. That's the, the guy in the forest with the axe and I think the other member. So all of these lyrics, nicely handwritten. It looks a bit Tolkien-esque. Uh, they're all in Swedish, so I can't actually read them. <laughs> so there's the main guy behind the project. And he's got some weird name which I can't pronounce, so I'm not going to bother now. Yeah, but very nice booklet and nice atmospheric picture there. So you can sort of see from the artwork, there's this, this is actually a double disc album because there's a shitload of music on it. Yeah, and then you've just got the other side. Yeah, so um, how would I describe this band? Primitive, trollish, forest, in the depths of the forest, nature worshipping black metal. So it's got that kind of like a primitive garagey sound, like very raw, but not in the sense, these days like there's a million raw black metal bands out there. Like I think they come a dime, a dozen, and a lot of them don't stand apart. Whereas this band does, it sounds just sort of very rough and, the, the, the grip on melody is amazing. Like it's harsh and rough, but at the same time, these melodies are so commanding, they're so strong. So definitely, definitely check this out. Like um, I think this band is, they're quite well established overall, but I think they're, they're underrated and not enough people actually have listened to this or maybe given it a chance. I could be wrong, but if you haven't heard them, definitely, definitely check it out. Now, this album, it's very epic. It goes for a long time. It is one of those albums in general where there are not so many standout tracks as that overall atmosphere and mood, but it's brilliant. Like um, I've owned this CD for over 20 years. I still listen to it on a regular basis. Like it's just one of those albums, the aesthetic quality. It makes me picture being in, in the depths of a Swedish forest or, you know, like around a campfire in a forest, you know, in some kind of ritualistic dance going on, something like that. It's very tribal, very primitive, but the melodies are just so striking, so the atmosphere is soaring, brilliant. Um, and also, having said that, um, a couple of tracks do actually stand out to me. Um, probably my favorite on the album is Frana, that's track two on the disc one. Just um, the chorus they do, they, they have this sort of um, groovy breakdown bit with a like a catchy riff like that and it sounds like they're beating on some jungle drums or something it's like Rah, nah. like um just amazingly catchy and tribal so I really like that song and um there's another song I can't remember can't pick it up but I, a couple of the tracks have female vocals and when I say female vocals I don't mean like the 
sickly sweet vampiric oh, like operatic vocals it's very sort of um a bit like a gasp or something like uh like dirgy but it's this woman singing these clean sort of chanted background vocals on top of the raspy harsh black metal vocals so it just makes for a really haunting atmosphere like unbelievable um this band this is the only one i own actually but i'm really dying to get a copy of their debut album called fran marda so that is one which is revered as legendary in the swedish black metal scene and just black metal in general it's kind of hard to get hold of so if you have any recommendations for where i can grab that at a good price let me know arkanum with fran marda that would be great uh later ones i can't comment because i haven't heard them so um I'd be interested to hear from you guys um which ones do you recommend apart from this one. So anyway, if you haven't heard this band, this is a great one to start with. This is Arkanum with Kampen. All right. Firstly work once again. Dominions of Satyricon playing now. Great song. All right. Okay, so up next, we have yet another black metal band. This is some Australian black metal this time. This is Astrial with Summoning the Essence of Ancient Wisdom. So not to be confused with the band Ancient Wisdom. This is just the name of Astrial's album Summon the Ess Summoning the Essence of Ancient Wisdom. So I got this copy in Australia many years ago. I didn't realize that this was limited. So to 500 copies, there you go. I got 461. This was um when the band was just sort of starting out, I think. So um for those of you who don't know Astriala from sunny Queensland, I think Brisbane or somewhere nearby, and they play atmospheric black metal which is guitar oriented. So no keyboards with this band. Yeah, that's right, no keyboards. So it's all all of the melodies are created by the guitars. The vocals are very harsh. Um to compare them to some bands, I remember a friend I tape traded with Sylvia. I copied her some stuff by this band and she said they reminded her a bit of Windeer. the Norwegian one man black metal project and also they've got these kind of quirky melodies as well and interesting time changes so it sort of reminds me a bit in that sense not only of Windeer but also of Dissection but they are certainly not a Dissection clone band not like Falkandra or something like that where it's basically mimicking Dissection to a T this band is not doing that but you can see how they take influence from Dissection so to show you the booklet here So layout of the lyrics and pictures of the band and uh some verse from one of the songs. There you go. And here's the disc that kind of astral star design. Yeah, so this is an EP, five tracks, and they're all of the songs are really good. I can't say I dislike any um my favorite track though. and a good starting point for you guys if you haven't heard this band track 4 as mist befell the ruins just some really great catchy quirky melodies and that it's mid paced in the way it sort of gallops a bit and it also features some clean guitars so not acoustic guitars but just interludes of these really sort of clean melodic atmospheric guitars and that's a trademark of this band so not only on this EP but subsequent albums They often play a lot of clean guitars like just to slow it down with some atmosphere and it's really mesmerizing, really atmospheric. So um just fantastic. And then the last track Summoning the Essence of Ancient Wisdom, the title track, that's an instrumental and it's got some really intricate clean guitars. That's a sort of softer track, but um really nice epic outro for this album. So um yeah, no no bad songs again. The only gripe I have with this particular release is I think the production doesn't really do it justice like um it's not harsh as in horrible sounding but um just i think it could have been clearer in some respect so like a uh, sometimes like the the rhythms get drowned out a bit by the guitars like just just slightly but like overall like you can hear everything well but i just think if it had better production it would sound even better but the good news is this band on subsequent releases like uh renaissance misanthropy and Ode to Antiquity I think that's when they really polished up the production in a good way because you could hear everything really clearly. And by the way, those releases Renaissance Misanthropy and Ode to Antiquity in my opinion they're even better than this. This is just like a taster and introduction. But um 
they again they epitomize those use of the the clean guitars as well as the quirky melodies and everything um and apart from musically to give you some idea of what they sound like the vocals sound a bit sort of like really raspy and snarled a bit in the vein of uh maniac of mayhem like especially from what's that album mediolanum capta s where it's like ah, really snarled like that that's what the vocals sound like and they on this album features no clean vocals, but on subsequent ones they do. And those clean vocals and more atmospheric parts, they remind me a little bit of Enslaved or Ulva, and I love both of those bands, so can't go wrong there. But anyway, this is a great one to check out. If you haven't heard this band, I would urge you to listen to them, especially those other albums. But this is a great one to start with. That's Astrial with Summoning the Essence of Ancient Wisdom. Incidentally, when I still lived in Australia, I used to see this band perform live a lot. There was this festival that they had in Western Sydney, um, Bloodlust, which they held in Blacktown every year. And Astrial was sort of like a, a staple band of that lineup. But I really, I got the chance to see them a few times. And uh, it was really an amazing experience, like awe-inspiring to see them live. Great atmosphere. So check them out, Astrial. All right. And we're nearly done with this video. Just one more to finish off. And finishing with quite a famous one, we're shifting back to melodic death metal now, Swedish death metal, a band which is extremely famous, an album which is very well known. This is, of course, At The Gates with Slaughter of the Soul. So you will remember, if you have seen my previous videos, I mentioned that melodic death metal isn't one of my favorite styles. Uh, only in the sense that I can appreciate it, but I think that especially a lot of those Swedish bands, they rip each other off. They all sound like clones of each other so like um there's no major distinction between the bands but having said that this is one of the bands which started it all so at the gates as well as maybe dark tranquility these were the influential bands which really formed that style and then other bands cottoned on and started copying that style so um i have to give this band credit because they have been highly influential and um inspired that whole scene and do i like this album yes i do um, it's, it's not, but all I'll say is, it's not one I'm reaching for every day, but once in a while I like it. Um, I actually got this when I was shopping in Thailand. This discounted CD shop, this guy, the guy there, he used to do a good, pretty good deal. Like, if you buy a few CDs, he'd throw in something for free. So he gave me this one and I thought, yeah, I should give it a chance. And, um, yeah, definitely worth it. Like, I've listened to this a few times before this video just to become reacquainted with it. And I do actually like it, like just all of those trademark classic melodic, melodic Swedish, oh, I'm speaking German now, melodic Swedish black metal elements, Swedish death metal influences, um, which have made this a trademark of the genre. Yeah, so, um, there's the despair. So what can I say about this album? It's melodic, it's groovy, it's heavy, the vocals are raspy, as are a lot of bands in that subgenre. Um, once again, for me, maybe it's my taste, but I feel that there's not a lot of standout tracks for me. They all sort of blend into each other. But again, if you're in the mood to listen to this, it's a great listen. Um, some of my favorite tracks, though, if I had to choose a couple, would be number three, Cold. I like the uh, interludes of the clean, somber sounding guitars, which are great. And also um, track seven, World of Lies, just got this heavy, mean, chunky riff in that and great groove. So just awesome. And like, when I'm in the right mindset, I'll listen to a band like this and actually really appreciate them. They are a good band. It's just that so many other bands have ripped off this style. So like, I feel like in Sweden now, like, uh, these bands are kind of like a dime a dozen. But as I said, this is the band that started it all. So if you're interested in melodic Swedish death metal and you haven't heard this band, you need to rectify that because this is where it all started. And um, they've also released a lot of other albums which have been influential, like uh, The Red Sky Is Ours and etc. etc. So uh, tell me what's your favorite At The Gates album and do you like them? I certainly do. Something different for me to listen to once in a while. So that's at the gates with Slaughter of the Soul. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. Just continuing down my list with the next five CDs. Next update, I'm actually gonna talk about some of my existing vinyl collections. So 
I'm not sure if I'm going to do hard rock, heavy metal or black metal, but for those who care, let me know what you want to see. I'm going to do that. And then after that, I'm going to go into the Hell's Headbangers update. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Sorry if I rambled on for too long, but you know me, if the music means something, I can't help going on about it. So thanks a lot for your patience. Uh, if you're new and you've never seen this before and you enjoyed it, I hope so. Uh, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. So have a good weekend, guys. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.